Quince Orchard faces Northwest in the state semifinal game this week, a team they beat in the regular season the last time they faced Northwest in the playoffs. After having beaten them during the season, they got sent home. Rod Run faces the same scenario with Tuscarora in Virginia. Can these top 10 teams face down history? And the Turkey Bowl, it's one of DC's longest standing traditions. But there's a new face in DC's public school championship game. We'll talk about that straight ahead on nride.com's High Def High School. Hey, welcome everybody. It is the most exciting time of the year in high school football. It's getting cold outside and some of the schools have moved their games to Saturday afternoons to save us from the frosty weather. We are down to now only the elite teams in high school football in the DMV. I'm Joe Ball and this is the one and only Chad Ricardo. Welcome to Enride.com's High Def High School brought to you by Quality Chiropractic. Chad, there were some big games around the DMV last night. And of course today, in about a half hour after this show ends, they will kick off right here where I am at South County. They'll be hosting West Poe today. Yeah, Joe, I mean, you look up here in Maryland, you had Linganore and Frederick. You had the massive game between QO and Northwest. They're meeting for the second time. And then today, Flowers, of course, going to take on Wise in a game that everybody has been looking forward to. But you, sir, as you just alluded to, you're there at South County. That's a big time ticket. It is a big time ticket. That is exciting. I am thrilled, Chad. I can tell you right now, South County is won this region championship two years in a row and gone on to the state semifinal game. They were 7-0 this year before meeting up with this West Potomac squad who they will face today. West Potomac knocked them off. But let's get to some of last night's action. Of course, we will begin up in Montgomery County. Joe Ball is the granddaddy of them all. QO versus Northwest. The Maryland 4A State Semifinal a.k.a. round two of the battle for bragging rights in Montgomery County. Northwest Jags entering the Cougar Dome to take on the number four Quince Orchard Cougars. These squads have a history of one beating the other in the regular season only to see their counterpart exact revenge in the playoffs. As you may recall, QO thumped the Jags 31 to nothing earlier in the season. Tonight, though, would have a decidedly different feel. Pick it up in the first. A Makai Walker punt, and Daryl Harper can't get his hands up under it. Matthew Longa jumps on it for the Cougars. Great teams make you pay for putting it on the ground. Savon Briggs, play action, and it's Walker with the one-handed grab. What can't the kid do? Takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Seven, nothing Cougars. The Northwest offense was decidedly better tonight, and a lot of that had to do with the play of Patrick Doyle. Here he gets it to Devin Anderson, who moves the Jags into the red zone. On fourth and goal from the one, though, Elijah Mills and Lunga combine to keep Northwest out of the end zone. No soup for you, young man. Gotta take advantage of opportunities. Northwest would learn. Next possession, the Jags do just that. Doyle and a great grab by Devin Anderson. Young man coming into his own like Neo in the Matrix when he realized he knew Kung Fu. Plays later and it's downtown Daryl Harper punching it in, tying the game at seven. Northwest would enter the half with big momentum on their side. Third quarter now and I don't know what kind of mojo Coach Kelly served at the break, but I need some of that in my life. Cougars march it straight down the field, capped by the Steven Sananiola touchdown. Sam Smith would make his extra point extending the Cougars lead to 14 to 7. Coach Hawkins' crew could not be outdone as they answer almost immediately. Doyle to Harper, pushed out inside the five. Little guy big game, Anthony Berry handles the light work. It's 14 to 13, but spoiler alert, 
here's the key to the game. Jalen Husky gets his hands on the point after, and it's 14-13 still. QO leads. On to the fourth, and at times it felt as though Northwest played the better game. Barry breaking free for a big run, but Donovan Brown using that sprinter speed to keep him from reaching Pater. After the QO defense tighten, the Jags have this 20-yard attempt to take the lead, but it's just a bit outside. Score remains 14-13. After the Jags defense forced a three and out, Doyle finds Harper for a key third down pickup. QO bend but don't break, forcing the Jags to try another field goal, this one from 40. It's up to take the lead. It's on target, but it falls just short. The Cougars defense stepped up time and time again, beating back the Jags, avenging that 2019 playoff loss and ultimately earning QO a berth back to the Maryland 4A State Championship. You leaned on each other, you leaned on your brother next to you, and you guys came out on top because of how, how much energy and passion you guys played with, man. And when it was time to make critical plays, you guys made critical plays, man. And now we're going to state champions! What a game, Joe Ball. Listen, Quince Orchard was able to take care of Northwest during the regular season, and for once, they beat them again in the playoffs. That, of course, is going to send them to the championship game. They're going to play the winner of this afternoon's matchup between Flowers and Northwest. Joe, your thoughts? Well, and first of all, a shout out to Tabitha, who's been all over us this week saying that we hate Quince Orchard. But uh, I think that Quince Orchard matches up very well with both Wise and Flowers. Let's just take it one at a time. Let's just say Wise goes into that game. Physically, just a powerful, brawling team. Jaden Saray is, is just solid muscle. Amar Thomas is just an imposing figure. Those two guys alone are intimidating. But this Quince Orchard team has been around the block. They are physically prowess themselves. If they attack Wise straight ahead, right up the gut, they've got their best shot. And the tremendous linebacker play and tremendous pressure that Wise puts on the quarterback has masked a little bit of a weakness covering in the secondary. So that's one of the places that uh, Quince Orchard could have some success right down their throat and then going over the top. You know, if QO does play uh, this wise squad, first and foremost, that will be the matchup that both of these teams and everybody in the DMV has been waiting to see again for the last few years. They played a few years ago. Wise got the better of them. QO then won a state championship, but it was not against the Pumas. QO will want to do it against Wise. I think, though, that, that when these two teams match up, Joe, you, you spoke about it. Styles make fights, and these two teams have very different styles. QO is going to look to punch Wise in the mouth, and Wise is going to look to use their speed and athleticism to get up and down the field against them. It's going to be a very fun matchup and the one that everybody has been waiting to see. Now, I'll take you to that Flowers matchup. First of all, the Flowers wins. Congratulations to them for finally slaying the Dragon. We'll see whether they can do that, but... If Flowers wins, Joe, I say, and I hate to, Coach Powell, I love you, but if Flowers wins, this is QO's game to lose. This Quince Orchard team has been on a bit of a mission. Again, Coach John Kelly brought all of these young men together. I believe that if QO plays Flowers, they're just too big, they're too physical, and they'll run right over that Jag squad. I agree with you, Chad. Uh, Sean Johnson's got a lot of weapons. Alpha Cisse, Maurice Brown, but QO is too strong, too mature, and I, I think if Flowers should somehow get by Wise this afternoon, uh, it, it may not happen that lightning strikes twice for them that they get by a QO next week. It is the region finals in Virginia. It is the state semifinals in Maryland. But all the marbles are on the table in D.C. on Thanksgiving. It was the Turkey Bowl, the championship of the DCIAA. The Rough Riders from Roosevelt knocked off the HD Woodson Warriors less than a month ago. But this is the Turkey Bowl. Novon Lee dropping. He hits Deion Ray Jr. on a slant. Gets it down to the 15 yard line. Novon, first and goal. He shoots underneath all the fellas. He's in the end zone. And Woodson strikes first. They're up 6 0. Let's keep it real. This one blown dead. This is a two point conversion attempt. But Montez Minor letting Kayvon Sneed know how he really feels. Kayvon says, Not in my house. Next play, Novon, play action. Rolling to his left, finds Omar Satterfield in the end zone. 
with the two pointer. It's eight zip Woodson early on. Second quarter, Khalil Wilkins dropping, looking around, buying time, moving to his left, and he finds Derek Hawkins in the back of the end zone. Touchdown, Roosevelt. They go for two. It's 8 8 with 7.26 left in the first half. Just two minutes later, Khalil Wilkins, the sophomore, dropping again. Let's one fly! Older bro Antonio pulls it in around the 27 yard line. Drops off Jason Bell and Jay Sean Fulmore. Gives Roosevelt their first lead of this Turkey Bowl with a two point conversion. It's 16 8, Rough Riders. Third quarter, Novon looking into that end zone. He's got Amari Thomas. Touchdown. They pull within two points. They do not get the conversion. It's 16 14. Roosevelt hanging on. But late third quarter, Khalil. Goes downfield to Nehemiah Phillips. He snags that one. He's still rolling. 42 yards on the play into the red zone. Sets up the Rough Riders at the Warriors 13. That drive moves into the fourth quarter. Khalil calling his own number. He's on the corner and in. That makes it 23 to 14. Roosevelt pulls away. Juan Pratt gets into the action, scoring a touchdown late in the game and times are a changing in the DCIAA. Roosevelt gets their first Turkey Bowl win in 42 years. They take this one 37-22. And coming up, we're gonna take a look at more action from last night and we're even gonna preview some of the big time matchups in Virginia as well as in Maryland. Keep it locked right here. Height of High School is in session. Hold it, partner. You're sitting on a pile of gold. Your car's never been worth more, and we're giving you a way to cash in. At InRide, we buy cars. Problem is, inventory's tough to come by. So now, we're up in the ante. If your car was worth three grand, we'll give you five. If it was worth ten, we'll give you fifteen. We'll even buy at your lease and pay you thousands in cash. You can just take the money and run. And we'll give you the best offer or give you five hundred bucks. We'll even bring a check right to your door. Cash in your ride with InRide. That felt good. If you've got arms, legs, a back, if you've got a body, period, you're going to need quality care. And the team at Quality Chiropractic treat you like family, and they heal people. I love being here at Dr. D'Amato, the girls in the front desk. They make you feel like family when you come in every time. Healing whole people, not just backs. Quality Chiropractic is here for you. Call now and book your appointment. Quality Chiropractic, adjusting the quality of your life. Hey, leave that remote over there. It's almost Tusky time, which means me. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome back to the show. As we mentioned earlier, we are getting close to the kickoff time for one of the biggest games in the region, Soco and West Poe. And we've got a guest with us right now, Coach Tynan Rolander, head football coach of the South County Stallions. Coach, we talked a few weeks back and you mentioned that uh, the first time you guys played West Poe, they snuck up on you a little bit. You didn't have a whole lot of film on George Stamos. You've had a few weeks to see him. He's been a giant killer three times now in the last five weeks. Uh, what's changed over the last month in terms of you guys' preparation? Well, being able to see him play uh, more than just a handful of games and at that, uh, a handful of games at quarterback for his first varsity football, you know, we got a better idea of what he's capable of doing. We, we had a pretty good idea of the athlete that he was. I mean, he's a five-star lacrosse recruit going to Maryland, so we knew the kid could play, but um, we thought that him playing his second game or third game there at quarterback uh, on a Friday night would play into our hands more so than it played into their hands. Um, so we, we've, been, uh, we've been delving into the film a little bit more, and we, we think we have a pretty good game plan for him. I believe it. Uh, Coach Ty, South County Stallions taking on West Pole a little later on today. Coach, thank you very much for stopping by with us. No problem, thank you. Playoffs in the DMV. We'll be right back. High Dev High School is in session.
High Def High School. HD Wilson is High Def High School. Hey, welcome back to the show. We're going to have more playoff football action for you in a few minutes. But we alluded to some of the games that are going on this afternoon. Let's talk now about that Wise Flowers game that's going on in Upper Marlboro. In that first matchup, Joe, we're talking about a 20-19 to game. Flowers with a chance uh, to tie the game at the end of it. Instead of kicking the extra point, they go for two. Don't get it, but that in and of itself, Joe, showed how much this Flowers team believes that they are not only on the precipice, but they're ready to actually take down the perennial powerhouse in Wise in PG County. That's amazing. It tells me Damian Powell has got balls, Chad. And you know what? <laughs> He's got a whole lot of weapons as well. And Aiden Hogue, Sean Johnson, first of all, has got a lot of places to spread the ball. Uh, Alpha Cisse is probably the most notable. Maurice Brown, the third. But there are a lot of guys. Habib Kamara. Uh, or Kamara. Um, I, I think today could be a, a big day for Flowers. Uh, you got to love them. Wise has, uh, has been dominant all year long. But... That game was at Flowers. This game's on the road. Does that change things at all? Look, I, I look at this Flowers team, 498 points for, uh, only 157 points allowed. All season long, this Flowers team has looked like they have been on just on their way to getting this exact thing done. I do believe that Flowers is on the way to competing against Wise, but I think that so long as number two is over there, that they are one year too early. When you look at this Wise team, only 57 points allowed all season long. They've allowed two touchdowns in three games, only three touchdowns once. That defense is starting to play ball. You look at all of the Wise teams that have won championships, everybody points to the offense, but it's truly the defense of the Pumas that gets teams on and off of the field. We talked about Jaden Saray as compared to other quarterbacks in, in high school football in the area. Let me read you some of Jaden's numbers. He's completed 75% of his passes, Joe Ball. He's had 28 touchdowns to only three interceptions. He's a different kind of student athlete. In the backfield, Dadrian Carter-Williams has already run for over 1,000 yards. But the true difference in this game is going to be wide receiver Nick McMillan. McMillan has 34 catches and 13 touchdowns. When Wise has nowhere else to go, look for the Pumas to go to McMillan and look for the Pumas to ride into the state championship. Last two teams standing out in the Dulles 4A corridor. Well, we've seen this coming all year long. Tuscarora on the road at Broad Run today for the region championship out toward Dulles. Brandon Wheelbarger's team coming in with Bryce Duke in that high powered offense, averaging just under 35 points per game. Broad Run trying to shake that monkey off their back and finally get by Tusky for a region title. First drive of this game, Tusky finds themselves early on going for it on fourth down from their own 40 yard line. They needed a yard, they don't get it. That gives Broad Run a short field. Not many big plays all day long in this one. Griffiths taking what he can get. Short one here on the slant, but getting first downs a little at a time. Same drive, Brett Griffiths takes it down all the way to the pylon, almost gets in there. That'll be inside the one, nevertheless. They say he's out. Two plays later, Aslan Scheip sticks it in there. That touchdown puts the Spartans up 7-0. Tusky, again, next drive, going for it on fourth down. Sonny Menino is bailing out to his left, trying to extend the play, loses the handle. Broad run comes up with it. Second time in the first quarter that Brett Griffiths is given a short field. He takes advantage of that, slowly grinding. Moving ahead, six and seven yard chunks. Caps that drive off, calling his own number with a six yarder. That makes it 14 nothing with 7.53 to play in the first quarter. The Spartan defense was on today. Every time Tusky went away from Bryce Duke, they were not very friendly. Alexander Biddle laying into Clayton Aposky here. Most of the day though, Tusky went to that horse that brought him there over and over. Broad Run was counting on it and they hemmed Bryce Duke in all day long. That was Tusky's third drive and a very poor punt. Gives a short field over to Griffiths and company. He's swinging it out to Arnoff Thornhill right away. And Arnoff glides his way for 16 yards just outside that Husky red zone. Arnoff again, the other way. He's moving it down inside the five yard line. First and goal at the three. 
and you know what comes next, don't you? That's right, a little Brett Griffiths for your trouble. 21 zip, broad run. Husky stiffened up on that first drive, trying to come back and impose their will with their defense. But late third quarter, Alex Estes pounding his way through the Tuscarora defense. Tees it up one more time inside the 10 yard line. And number 10, Brett Griffiths, is gonna call his own number and jump in that end zone. It was 28 nothing. And then on the next kick, the 20 mile an hour winds gave trouble for the Huskies on a fair catch. They give it back again to Sparta inside their own territory. Griffiths would have another one yard plunge and the Spartans go on to win it 35 to nothing. There were a couple of plays that didn't go Tuscarora's way today. Two fumbles that were out before the whistle blew that they came up with. One resulted in the first touchdown of the game on the following play. The second while they were trying to force their will defensively on that opening drive in the second half and turn this thing around. I love the way they responded. These kids reflected Brandon Wheelbarger's character. They didn't worry about what they couldn't control and the reality is these refs do not have the luxury of instant replay to correct things and get it perfectly. This was Broad Run's day, and they move on, win the region championship that has eluded them for a long, long time. Again, the final 35-0 over Tuscarora. Eleven and one Mountain View taking the trip over to number two and undefeated Stonebridge. The Wildcats were pre-gaming as if they may be about that action, bruh. But it wouldn't take long for Mickey Thompson's crew to remind them, this ain't what you want, player. This ain't what you want. After forcing a turnover, first Stonebridge possession, Eli Mason running a little Wildcat punches it in from inside the three, and the proverbial beatdown was on. Just like that. Six nothing Bulldogs. First play of the second quarter, beautiful misdirection. Mason to Jacob Thomas, who finds Zeke Wimbush, and Zeke is handing out stiff arms for Thanksgiving. Two point conversion by Mason made the score 14 to nothing. The Bulldogs' O might not be nothing to be trifled with, but their D is equally dangerous. Bad snap sends the ball into the end zone. Instant pressure leads to a safety and it's 16 to nothing. That's the lead that the bridge would take into the half. Following another Mason touchdown run, Zach Lang makes a beautiful adjustment on the ball. That young man has a bright future on and off the football field. His pick would lead to more Jacob Thomas magic as the lefty gets it to Colin Hart. And if you can't stop Colin Hart, you can only hope to contain him. Hart takes this one to the house, making it 30 0 Stonebridge. Thomas and Hart would connect one more time, pushing the separation and final score to 37 0. Next up for the Bulldogs, they have a rematch with Highland Springs, the squad that they played the instant classic of a state championship game with during the spring. All right, there were some huge games yesterday and last night, but the bevy of Big monster games happens in about an hour today. Chad, let's turn our attention to the Madison Warhawks right now. They are hosting Centerville, a team who gave them, out of all the teams they beat this year, 
team who gave him probably the closest game. Joe, like you said, 20 to 17 was the score of the matchup between Centerville and Madison. Toughest game that Madison has had thus far. I believe that Madison will represent Northern Virginia in the state championship game. All of you at home, you can see what that implies. We'll talk about that a little later on. This Madison defense, though, they've been great. A total of 91 points allowed all season long. Six shutouts. They've been bagels out to six different teams out there. And in nine of their games, they've held opponents to single digits. The one of the the only games that they didn't was against Centerville, allowing those 17 points. When you look over there at the Cats, the Cats lost two games this year, but don't get it twisted. They lost the game to Stonebridge, and they lost to this Madison squad, arguably the two best teams in this Northern Virginia region. But of course, the young man that we have to talk about is Isaiah Raglan. I'm going to read you these numbers, Joe. Raglan has rushed this year for 2,613 yards. He's also run for 29 touchdowns. This Centerville squad is dangerous. Chad, they are dangerous, and they're dangerous because of Isaiah Raglan. But when they get one-dimensional, Madison's got him figured out. I think where they had success in the fourth quarter of that game was going up over the top and throwing the football. So that is, that is the thing right there. Isaiah Raglan is the heart of this Centerville team. They've got to pound you, and he wants to wear that defense out. But they've got to find a way to get that ball into the second level against this Madison defense because the Madison box is too strong. And don't forget, you can check out this episode and all of our previous episodes and lots of great digital content, 24 hours a day. Chad, we are open 24 hours a day online at www.highdefhighschool.com or you can go to our YouTube channel. Just look up High Def High and make sure you're interacting with us. Hey, I, I wanna give out another shout to Tabitha. Tabitha was on Chad and I's back this week saying we just do not like Quince Orchard. That's not true at all. We love Quince Orchard, but, but Tabitha, shout out to you. We wanna hear from you on social media. Interact with at Chad at, at RealChadRicardo and with me at, at JoeBall777. Keep it coming, we love hearing from you. Get ready everybody. Get out to see a high school football game this afternoon and come back here next week at 11.30 a.m. on 7 News WJLA to check out inride.com High Def High School. For Chad Ricardo, I'm Joe Ball. We'll see you next week.